writer, I'm Ms. Sarcastic, and in this video, our lesson episode, we're going to be exploring color theory, and we're going to be doing a color wheel, but in a rather unusual way. So we're going to explore mixing our primary colors to create secondary colors, but we're going to do it with a little bit of artist flavor, okay? We're not going to do our typical color wheels because we're going to add some observational elements into this and, of course, some artist flavor. And if you look, this is artist flavor. It's full of life, it's dynamic, it has uh, lots of values going on, and we're also going to be playing with dripping um, our paint and blowing our paint to create some a lot of dynamic movement within our artwork. Um, and it's also going to help place emphasis and bring our viewers' attention to our focal point, which is our hand, but it's also an, an, secret. It's also an exploration of color. So we're going to be learning how to blend our colors by exploring a color wheel in a rather abstract way, um, but also we're going to be drawing our hands. Not by tracing it, not by tracing it, you can see it's not traced, okay? We are doing some observational sketching, but we're going to go full tilt and we're going to go right with using some markers. So for this art lesson, we're going to be sketching with our felt markers. Now if you are wanting to come back and do the felt marker part afterwards, no problem. You can start off with pencil and go over your lines with marker, but I'm gonna sketch and then reaffirm my lines with my permanent marker, and I just use Sharpie. Um, and we're also going to be exploring with watercolor paints. So all you need for this, for this lesson, for this color theory, color wheel, unusual color wheel, of course. Our lesson is you need some watercolor paints. Uh, Permanent felt marker. Now, if you don't have permanent marker, you can use black pencil crayon or colored pencil or black wax crayon. Those are all go also going to resist. Or if you have black oil pastel, you can use that too. No big deal. Anything that's going to resist the paint or not bleed if you add water to it. So for instance, the Crayola black felt markers, as much as we love them, is washable, so when we add our water to it, it's going to bleed and kind of dissolve and become paint itself. So we don't really want that. So grab something permanent, again, black felt marker, permanent marker, or a black colored pencil or pencil crayon, or a black wax crayon, or a black oil pastel, white paper, so something thicker like cardstock, cover stock, or construction paper, and a choice background piece of paper, Mine is blue. Pick any color that makes you happy. Any color you want to represent you, you pick that color. And we're going to, um, this is carver stock, so this is a little bit thicker, or you can use construction paper, but don't pick just typical colored paper. You need something a little bit thicker, so that way it stays nice. This is just barely thicker than normal paper. It's cover stock, okay? So just grab something that's a little bit thicker, uh, and that's all you need. That's all you need, and we're going to grab our watercolor paints and something to draw with and explore creating this abstract artist flavor representation of ourselves color wheel. Let's make some art. All right, so we're gonna start our hand color wheel artwork by creating a background. So you're gonna pick a choice background paper, something that's either thicker paper like cardstock or construction paper, and we're gonna begin with that. So we're gonna pick three different colors that we're gonna make some drips from. So I'm gonna load up my paintbrush with a lot of water, and then I'm gonna bring that water over to my paper. I'm gonna just add it into that paint pigment, which my first color is purple, okay? And we're gonna make it pretty watery. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the paper and we're not going to throw it or drip it very hard. We're just gonna tilt it a little bit to get, allow gravity to help us. You can see it's starting to move. Okay, tilt it and blow. Okay. Right to the edge. Okay, we gotta do that two more times. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do white. Yes, I am. Okay, I'm gonna do a bigger splotch this time. Load it up, load it up. More paint. Okay. I'm gonna turn my paper, and I'm gonna get gravity to help me here. I'm gonna tilt it and blow. Okay, one more time. 
Mm, yellow. I'm juicing yellow. Okay. Okay, turn, tilt, and blow. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we got some background texture. But I kind of like a little bit more, and I want a little bit of contrast. So before I keep going, I'm going to add a little bit of black. So we're just going to take some black, and now we're not throwing paint, okay? No throwing actions, okay? That makes our paint go everywhere. What we're gonna do is a tapping actions. So you're, you're gonna hold your paintbrush still above it and you're gonna tap, okay? So load up your brush with water and black paint and you're gonna tap around the edge. We don't need to worry about the middle, okay? We don't need to worry about the middle because the hand is gonna go there. Let's so just go around the edge and we're just gonna add some texture, not a lot, just a little, right? We don't want to make it messy. And just like that, we're gonna take our background, slide it to the side, and let that magic dry. And while it's drying, we're gonna work on our hand. If I can pick up the paper. Okay, hand paper. And we're gonna explore uh, yeah, I'll use this one. We're gonna explore just drawing hands and then also we're gonna fill it in. So we're going to imagine that we're gonna draw our hand and we're gonna also gonna add a little bit of a shadow before, um, after we cut it out and glue it on. So we're gonna try and draw our hand the same size that we would have it normally in real life. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do before we life sketch is we're just gonna draw a dot at the bottom and at the top so we get the right size. And then we're gonna look at our hand and we're going to draw it. Oh yeah. We're just gonna do a nice simple high-end hand sketch. And we're just going to first sketch out the palm, where that's gonna go. So we're just getting some sketch lines happening. Gonna map it all out. And you're gonna draw your hand the way you see your hand. And I, of course, I'm gonna draw my hand the way I see mine. Okay, just mapping it out. I'm just gonna draw a little bit of my wrist, but I'm not including that really into my drawing, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Okay, so I'm gonna have my finger going up. I'm just using my eyes to follow the shape of my hand. I'm trying to practice having my hand and my eyes work together to create coordination as I draw. Now, as you can see, my middle fingers are a little crooked. <laughs> no idea why. So I'll include that slightly crooked detail because that's what my fingers look like. <laughs> My pinky tends to go a little bit outward 
So I'll have it kind of go off to the side here. Okay, so general sketch in, and then we're gonna go back in and redefine the areas and add in our final details. Yeah, I'll add my gestural lines and I'll work on creating the knuckles using small lines and details just to get the essence and vibe of my how my hand is made up. Okay, so we got just a vibe of a hand and we're just gonna use this as our base for a color wheel, okay? So it's just our frame for a color wheel. We're just taking a different take on creating a color wheel. So we're gonna start off with our primary colors. So we're gonna begin by taking each primary. So our primaries will be yellow, red, and blue. We're gonna begin by creating our yellow swatch. and Pull it up your hand. Wherever you feel like it should go, you add that yellow, okay? And then I'm gonna do red. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm going to add my red. I'm gonna leave a space, right? Cause I'm gonna mix between. So I'm gonna mix, leave my space, and then I'm gonna skip over and then I'm gonna add red. And then I'm also gonna pull that up my hand intuitively wherever feels natural. Wherever you feel like going with that color, you let it go. Okay, and then finally we want Blue, I think I need a different blue. That one's a bit strong. There we go, more of a primary color blue. And I'm gonna skip between because I wanna again mix my secondaries in between there. And then I'm gonna let that move where I need it to go, wherever I feel like I want it to go, okay? Now, we're gonna take just water only and we are going to Pull two together, and that's gonna mix and make an orange, right? And then I'm gonna pull that one intuitively somewhere into my art, okay? Next, I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna pull my blue and my red together. I'm gonna mix between and then pull that where it, it needs to go into my artwork. And then finally, I'm gonna take my blue 
and my yellow, and I'm gonna mix it, and it's gonna become sort of a greeny color. I'm gonna pull it where it needs to go this way. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space here and there just because it's gonna add to that flavor. And it kind of gives it that kind of graphic illusion style. Okay, I need, I need to drip some black. Okay, we're gonna take our black. We're gonna, I just wanna add a little bit of texture. So I'm not gonna do it in a couple spots here. Mostly out on the tips of the finger. I don't wanna lose my color wheel, right? There we go. Just adding a few drips here and there. Just want, I just like a little bit of texture, my friend. Now, we're gonna let our background and our hand dry. Once it's dry, we're gonna take our hand, we're gonna cut it out and add it onto there. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. And it's dry. All right, so we're gonna cut out the hand and we're gonna glue it to the paper. That way. Okay, so grab your scissors and here we go. We're gonna cut along that black edge. And then we're gonna add a shadow on one side. So we're just gonna go along the edge, cut out your hand. recycle our extra bits just like that recycle it okay and now we're gonna place it on now you can put your hand wherever you want right you can change the angle and play with it and find something that speaks to you and makes sense with your art all right so once you got something figured out that makes sense for your hand and your background and essentially your composition you're gonna glue that focal point down, which is your hand. So we're gonna glue the border first and then the inside. So border and the inside, right up to all those edges. Make sure every little bit is covered. Then add some to the inside there. Okay, we're gonna lift, holding the edges, rotate that hand, and we're gonna move it around till you see a spot that makes sense for your own artwork, right? So you wanna move it till it makes sense for yours. Okay, two flat hands to press and hold. We're gonna do this a couple times to make sure we get all parts on and we wanna give the glue time to adhere to both the back of the paper of your hand and the background paper, right? Okay, lift. Then we're gonna take two flat hands and press to hold a second time. Make sure we really get those fibers all meshed together. And we gotta add the final touches. Okay. Grab your water paint. We're gonna grab black. And we're gonna go just along the edge here with our black and add a nice drop shadow just to one side. So I'm along here and I'm gonna drop shadow under the edge here. I'm gonna even see if I can get my paintbrush fibers below there. I'm just doing my right side, not the top because the shadow is being not being cast there. My light source is coming this way, so the light will hit there. But it's gonna hit along this edge. One more. 
and just like that, your very spectacular and slightly unusual hand color wheel artwork is done. Hi there, thank you so much for watching the art lesson. Now let's dive into some more ways that you can explore Ms. Artastic art lessons. The place to start is the Ms. Artastic blog. Here it's kind of like a hub for all things Ms. Artastic. You're gonna find links to the podcast where you can find my show notes and listen, um, or you can find the podcast on your favorite podcast player. Just search Ms. Artastic. You're gonna find teaching strategies and resources, free printables, art lessons for kids from the elements of art, principle, principles of design, seasonal art lesson ideas, and holiday art lesson ideas, some of the more popular holidays. But you can find so much more. So it gives you a great place to start. You can find some free lessons by clicking the number one button. And then you can learn a bit about me and find all my blog posts that cover things from back to school, advice for new art teachers, um, talking about the principles of design and how to teach them, tips for teaching visual art to kids, and so much more. Lots of freebies to discover, and this is the Ms. Artastic blog, so make sure you go to MsArtastic.com as this is your first place to start on your Ms. Artastic journey. The next place to go to is the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. You can search Ms. Artastic in the search bar up at the top, and then you can find my store and my lovely gold cat logo here. And this is a great place to start to find amazing art resources. As you can see, there is over 800 different resources to discover. Um, and over here, we have our custom categories. So if you don't want to use the search bar, which you could totally search my store over here. But if you don't want to, or if it's a little bit too complicated, you can always find different custom categories to get some inspiration for things you might want to find, like art sub resources, my artivity books that I've created, artists and art history, back to school, elements of art, directed drawing, principles of design, our world, primary art lessons, my roll and draw series, oh yeah, social emotional learning, and of course all of the holidays are in here from Halloween to Earth Day, end of year Easter, St. Patrick's Day spring, and so much more. Um, some of the cool things you might find are elements of art workbooks, I got principles of design workbooks, and so much art history guys. I have gone to town this year and created a lot of art history so you'll find art history workbooks. Um, there's a couple, there's a few different ones. This one is um, modern art history. You'll find Gustav Klimt, um, Georges Seurat, we'll have Alma Woodsy Thomas, Emily Carr, and so much more. In the first one there is artists such as Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Salvador Dali, um, and then I also have Western art history from 1900s to 1990s. So this is a modern art history workbook that goes through all the different modern art history movements from data to surrealism to abstract expressionism to early 20th century art. And I also have a art history, history of Western art, um, prehistoric to 1990s. So from ancient Greece to um, to Egyptian art, uh, romanticism, all of that you will find in prehistoric to 1990s, um, but all designed for kids. So you can check it out. I have different levels, primary um, levels through to middle school of all my different resources. You'll find them at the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. Again, go to Ms. Artastic on TPT. And finally, if you are somebody who wants to dive deep into art and you need a bigger solution. So maybe not just a single solution where you have just a couple of resources, but maybe you need something bigger, a full program that's going to guide you through planning an entire year, provide all the resources for doing that, all the year long plans, all the lesson plan templates, but then also teach you how to plan the year from your back to school to your first week, um, through classroom management and assessment, um, all the way through planning your entire year till the end of the year, setting yourself up with a year A and a year B so you have a rotating curriculum, so you're planning, you're spending less time planning and more time on things you love, 
like your passions, your family, your fur babies, whatever it might be, um, then you need to check out the Artastic Collective art curriculum. It is my art curriculum designed for art educators. So not only am I going to give you my three-phase proven process for planning an entire year in my art teacher growth course. I'm also going to give you all the resources for the planning part, but also all the lessons as well, whether it's community builders, first week activities, when you're done, um, everything will be included. And as bonuses, you're going to get monthly art teacher challenges and you're going to get a community form that's for all the members of the Artastic Collective to talk on and collaborate together with. And then also I'll be there and you'll get a direct line to me. I will help you anytime you need my support. So this is artasticcollective.com and here you're going to find again my art curriculum and other programs for our educators. You can learn about me here. But my friend, this is where you're going to transform and you can learn more by going to uh, the art curriculum area and there I will walk you through. Enrollment opens every August and January of every year. It is the ultimate art curriculum for our educators and I want to help you through that process of planning. I'm going to make sure that I provide you with all the resources that you need to become the best educator that you can be. And if it's not August or January, then unfortunately you can't join, but you can always get on the wait list and that way you can get the art curriculum that you need to be confident and fully planned without the stress. It is designed for educators and it's going to again help you go from stressed and overwhelmed to calm, happy, and fully planned. So make sure you go to artasticcollective.com right now. Get on the wait list if you are needing a full art curriculum to solve your planning needs. And I will see you next time.